Hello and welcome to Idea Nexus, a YouTube channel about uh, computer science and board gaming. Um, so many today, I'm going to talk about uh, an interesting game I found in a thrift store um, and finally got to finally got it to the table recently. Uh, many of the applications we build in the professional world are models of real world systems. Um, index funds, which are like automated mutual funds, model the stock market uh, in order to predict trends and manage their holdings appropriately. Uh, with COVID, there are numerous models projecting the spread of infections through the population. For our election, we have models that try to predict the outcome based on the polls. For example, 538 runs a multitude of simulations based on polling aggregates and historical trends to predict the results of the United States elections. Here's a game that's a relevant and, and enlightening model of the United States Electoral College, where players are split into two teams, uh, vying to win the presidential election by getting to 270 votes in the Electoral College. Um, as you can see here, we have our map. Um, every state has uh, the number of uh, votes it, it uh, contributes to the Electoral College for a total of uh, 538. And um, each turn, players are going to uh, try and uh, add influence to the different states to try and get to that, uh, that magic number of 270. We, uh, my family, we split into two teams. Um, we played uh, Barack Obama versus Dwight D. Eisenhower, our favorite Democratic and Republican presidents. Uh, to mix it up, uh, my kids played the presidential candidates campaigning for votes, while my wife and I played the super PACs raising funds in key states that could be used anywhere. So to, uh, to give you an example of a, of a round, um, you can do each turn, you can do one of two things. You can go campaigning or you can raise funds. So, for example, my, um, my son, uh, as the presidential, as Barack Obama, went campaigning. And what you do is you roll three dice and you take these three dice and you're going to put them, you're going, these, each of these represents electoral votes. So you're going to put each of them into a different location. Um, to a, you can assign each one to a different spot. So, oops. Four here, and then we have six here. And we're using uh, big poker chips to represent five influence and little ones to represent one. <clears throat> and then my other son, Dwight D. Eisenhower, he would then take his turn and he would assign uh, votes. So maybe we'll take Virginia with the six. We'll take... Georgia with five. Georgia's been in the news a lot lately. And we'll take Pennsylvania for four. With four. And then the uh, Super PACs, uh, uh, my wife and I were playing the Super PACs, but uh, we were we were letting our turns, we would handle the uh, fundraising. And you can see this uh, image of George Washington. These are the four states you can fundraise in. So when you fundraise, i to roll. Oh, first, before you fundraise, you decide, you say which state you're going to fundraise in. So in this case, as the Democrats, we're going to fundraise in California. So you roll and the first, you're going to take the full sum of the dice and the first five points has to go into the state where you fundraise. <clears throat> and in this case, that leaves me an additional five points which I can then distribute any way I would like. So it's a nice way to kind of expand your um, coverage of the map. So here my wife, uh, as the Republican super PAC, she's gonna fundraise in Texas with its 38 electoral votes. And once again, we'll put five points into Texas and that leaves seven points to use maybe to uh, let's sweep into the Midwest. <clears throat> and so through these competing sides, our map starts to evolve and we start to uh, vie for control of, of the electoral votes. Now, one thing you can do is you could also contest states. So let's say um, I rolled a six 
and I want Texas. So what you would do is that would you'd spend the six points there, negate the five points there, and then take a one point lead in Texas. Uh, additionally, when you uh, do campaign financing, you're going to draw one of these uh, presidential cards, which I call I call them event cards, um, and this will have a a result. Uh, your spouse tells, these are events that happen, your spouse tells a popular morning show host that his or her late father owned a brewery in Milwaukee. Cheeseheads around Wisconsin vow their support. Add four votes to Wisconsin. So, what, uh, Democrats put four votes into Wisconsin. And let's say we Draw another one for the Republicans. Uh, your opponent's spouse is overheard telling a campaign worker that she can't stand seafood. Add two mo votes to Maine and two votes to Rhode Island. So we'll add two votes to Maine and two votes to Rhode Island, which is going to flip it red. And so in computer science and software development, it's important to be constantly reevaluating and uh, critiquing the accuracy of our models. For example, uh, when I used to work on aviation logistics systems for the United States Coast Guard, I had a number of subject matter experts, or SHMEs for short, who were pilots and mechanics, and who were people who were actually working in the real world, and they would evaluate our system for its accuracy. Uh, and an anecdote here, um, we, our team once had a pilot confront us uh, to complain that our application let him land a C-130 aircraft on a Coast Guard cutter. And he was shocked when I didn't understand why that was a problem because I didn't know what a C-130 was or what a Coast Guard cutter was. But with his business knowledge and our programming knowledge, we were able to update the system to prevent that kind of situation. So let's critique the, uh, the presidential. Um, educationally, this game does an amazing job of familiarizing players with the Electoral College and the different numbers of votes each state is worth. In our game, uh, we had a great back and forth battling over California and Texas, uh, but we were also careful to try and, and take control of much, as much of the Midwest as possible. Uh, my son, who loves war games, immediately saw this as a game of area control and the strategic importance of different states. He got really excited playing this game. Um, so this is a great educational game. Um, for uh, criticisms, um, these are the, uh, the model complaints we have about the game. Um, it really comes down to a lot of luck of the dice rolls. Um, my son and I, we, we rolled all sixes um, several times early in the game while my wife's team, my wife and my other son, were rolling ones. Um, so it's very luck-based. Um, the uh, the um, event cards are, are, kind of a, are kind of interesting, too. They, they really give you some insights into how, into the, diff the character of different states. For example, um, uh, you support legalize, legalizing online gambling. Get, gets you three votes for Nevada as the as the uh, gambling state. Um, you are in favor of more drilling in the Antarctic National Wildlife Refuge. Add two votes to Alaska. Uh, a popular independent candidate suddenly announces his or her intention to run. Remove four of your votes and four of your opponent's votes from any states of your choice. Kind of uh, modeling how a third party uh, can, ta can take away votes from the two main candidates. Um, on a comedy show, you proclaim that you prefer Oregon Pinot Noirs to French Burgundies. Add six votes to Oregon. Um, oh, here's one. Your uncle gets drunk on cheap beer at a political picnic. Your opponent adds one vote to Georgia. So, oh, here's another one. Um, you are spotted wearing a Red Sox hat while prepping for a debate. Your opponent adds three votes to New York. So those are, uh, those are kind of neat for the... To, insightful about the different states and you can have some fun um, educating uh, students about the different industries that the the states have again the cards are random so there's randomness there um, the it's it what you're getting is some interesting trivia um, as speaking of trivia um, you also have uh, events like uh, your opponent claims to watch Russia from his or her backyard um, pick up six votes to be used any way you like again that's from the uh, 2008 election. Um, your opponent claims that there were gunshots all around the U.S. plane on his or her last trip to Pakistan after some questioning. That claim is retracted. Pick up two votes anywhere to be used as you like. Again, 
Uh, again, that goes back to the 2008 election. Um, you are considered to be a stronger than your opponent on fighting terrorism. Add five, five votes to any one state. So um, the these uh, these cards are these. This is an older game, and so these these events are kind of antiquated, uh, not quite um, as re not quite as relevant now. But it's interesting to learn, you know, the, some political trivia. Uh, luckily, um, what's an interesting thing is when we talk about um, we like to talk about in program we talk about refactoring. Um, these are in board games. These are called house rules, where players will modify or use a to use a programming term to refactor the game's algorithm to make it better fit our wants. And with the event cards, um, they come with uh, the game comes with a big stack of these blank cards, which you can write down current events um, and decide as a group how much these how many points uh, these different events are are worth. Uh, lucky me, having picked this game up uh, from a thrift store, uh, I found this printout uh, from, it's a 2012 article from the uh, internet. Um, it's House Rules. Um, it's called The Presidential Election Game Expanded and Improved. And it has um, the players split up into team with um, super packs. And it modifies the, um, it modifies how uh, how polling points or how polling points work, how um, it uh, it includes a it gets rid of um, the game's campaigning um, and instead replaces it with a war chest. Um, and this is kind of cool. They they even they had even made their own war chest. And what you do is you'll put your you'll put your pieces in here, and uh, and uh, as you fundraise, you're going to put the money into these, which you can then spend those spend the votes from your war chest out into the map as you like. And what's really neat about um, this, this printout that I found is that um, it's got scenarios. Um, so here we go. Here's Obama versus McCain. Um, and this is the starting map. You're going to put this many points on each state to reflect how the actual game goes. So the game, the model has gotten much more detailed uh, with, these, with these house rolls. Here you've got uh, Kerry versus Bush. Um, the electoral map, and we also have uh, Obama versus Romney, and of course, just using the polling data, you can very easily kind of construct your own uh, scenario based on any any uh, presidential election uh, in, in the United States history. So that's the presidential. With the 2020 election going on, um, we played this just a few days uh, before election day, and um, my son, my wife took my son and showed him one of the online maps where they have the, the interactive maps where they're counting the votes and he got super engaged. He was so excited. He came running to me and he said, dad, dad, mom showed me the, the electoral, the electoral map. And it was just like that board game we played, the presidential. That is so awesome. So it's exciting. This is a fun party game. It plays, it, it, uh, it takes about an hour to play. It's, but it's, it's, uh, it's very quick. Um, the, oh, one last thing I do want to mention um, is the scoring. Um, <laughs> is how do you want to score this game? Um, it comes with these sheets, and you, can you decide how many, uh, how many weeks of campaigning you're going to play. And each round, you're going to write in how many votes, how many electoral votes you got, how many votes you lost, and total them up. And each each uh, week of the campaign, you're going to update this, update this, update this. This sheet is terrible. Um, it really slows down the game. Um, the math gets the math. It, it's not difficult. It's not difficult math. It's just it, but it really interrupts the flow of the game, and it's much more fun to just roll dice back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and and see. And, and see instant results. But uh, the, the game, the publishers of the web, the, the publishers of this game, they do have a flash program online, which is great, um, where as you take the, as you take control of different states, you just click on those different states on the website. So you just have a laptop open and you click and it'll keep updating the score for you. Uh, I definitely recommend that way of going just to keep, just to keep the game moving quickly so that people don't have to sit around while I'm trying to carry the one and do mental math in my head. So if you want to check it out, um, you can find used copies on eBay. Um, I believe you could probably even, you can probably find it online in a few online stores. Um, 
it's a great little game, very educational and very, uh, very kind of exciting. It's fun. So thank you for tuning in and have a great day.